What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Golden Dice Podcast, episode number 42. We're just a, a week and a f- few days, maybe a week, depending on when you listen to this, from convergence dropping. So uh, we're just excited to to wrap that up and kind of give some thoughts on uh, polls that we've been doing on Facebook. But I don't know. I'm excited for the show. We also have a guest as well. But my co-host this week is the brains, of course, as always, Tommy. How are you doing tonight, Tommy? What's up, Jack? How are you? I'm well. Good, man. Good. And uh, our guest, I'm excited to have him, uh, is you've probably seen his artwork if you're in the uh, Facebook group at all uh, and not living under a rock. He does some great artwork of almost every character. Uh, we got Parker Simpson artwork with us. Parker, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good, man. Good morning to you guys. Uh, Parker, you, you've done some awesome uh, artwork that I've seen of, of many, many characters. So uh, I reached out and kind of wanted to do our uh, own little golden dice uh, type partnership uh, with two of my favorite characters, which is Chewie and Han. And I'm excited to uh, to be able to kind of announce that and kind of get going with that. And that's kind of why we uh, have you on tonight is kind of just announce a little bit to the world that we'll be doing a, a giveaway of uh, Chewie and Han's. And also, uh, you know, I ordered a play mat and stuff. So I don't know if you want to dive into the specifics of uh, kind of what the partnership is, how people can get involved and uh, things like that. Yeah, absolutely. So you like you said, you'd reached out to me a little while ago, um, said that you wanted to do something exclusive for your Patreons and do a little giveaway too. Um, and I'm always down for, for working with people, especially other content creators, because the Star Wars community is such a tight-knit group. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so I put together a... So I put together exclusive versions of Chewbacca, who's coming out in Convergence, and the Han Solo that came out in Across the Galaxy. These are different than the ones that you'll find on Top Deck TCG, which is where my my regular versions of all the cards are featured. Um, these ones are going to be full art versions, so you get a, a nice crisp picture of the illustration. It's also going to have a nice little exclusive tag at the bottom, just so everybody knows where it came from and knows that that's the only place that it'll be available. So you can make everybody jealous when you uh, bust out your (laughs) chewy Han deck next tournament. (laughs) But there's a good chance that I'll be uh, rocking that early on just because I love them. (laughs) Yeah, whether or not it'll be a great top tier deck or not is up for debate, but it's definitely thematic. And I think a lot of people are going to have fun with, with play in it, uh, especially with the Chewbacca artwork that has a nice yeah. little screaming porg on his shoulder. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's a little awesome detail. And I, I'm excited to get them. Um, and anybody that's interested in grabbing that uh, from our Patreon, at least uh, to guarantee that you'll get it. If you don't win the giveaway, um, you can uh, do that at Golden Dice on our Patreon, and that'll be for our $5 tier. Uh, that'll get you both a Han and a Chewie. So a two that, for one. That's worth the $5 right there. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they're, it's not double-sided. They're two separate cards because <laughs> if it was d- double-sided, that would kind of feel bad. It's like, all right, how do I uh, run this together? Uh, it'd be kind of like awkward flipping back and forth. Um, but yeah, I'm excited uh, for that and just ready to get going. So uh, this Friday, uh, up on Parker Simpson's Facebook artwork, Parker Simpson artwork, uh, Facebook page, uh, he is going to throw up a post kind of like formally announcing everything. So if you're interested uh, in kind of getting into that and see how you can get some of these cards, you can uh, head over there on Friday. I think you're scheduled for later in the day. So Friday night, um, if you check his Facebook page, you'll uh, you'll find out. And there'll also be a, an opportunity to win the map, but I guess I'll probably be throwing that one up because I ordered it. Uh, so you wouldn't have a picture of that to share, I guess. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. So if anybody's interested in, in getting their hands on these, if you're not a Patreon or if you are a Patreon and you just want another, another pair to give to, <laughs> to a friend, um, check out my Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash Parker Simpson artwork. Uh, exactly how it sounds. And yeah, there'll be an announcement. Like you said, this, uh, Friday evening and, it's going to be pretty easy. You share the post, you like the post, you like our page. There's going to be a couple different ways to enter so you can get as many entries in as you possibly can. Uh, better your odds a little bit instead of uh, rolling the golden dice. 
<laughs> you can absolutely yeah. cut that part. <laughs> the <laughs> dies. Oh that no! Stays. Oh, it stays. It all that, stays. That did not <laughs> roll off the tongue as I thought it would. <laughs> I think most jokes we tell don't really uh, don't really come to fr- fruition. They're usually, uh, especially when Shane's on here, it's just like, why do we? Why do we do this? But he's not Shane, on here. I don't think he's ever been on here. <laughs> man, you're a man of, after my own heart with comments like that. <laughs> uh, we'll get into uh, Shane a little bit in our Patreon uh, Patreon questions. We Wait, he's, some, uh... he's the one who had you guys making out with Jabba, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah that <laughs> would be Shane. All right. uh, I mean, that Jabba, was... Jabba would take care of you, though. He would. <laughs> Chip was not wrong. <laughs> I still can't believe that was a question that we asked. I can't believe I did that. Oh gosh, <laughs> Chip's like, yeah. Would you ask this to uh, Bobby Sapphire or uh, you know any other competitor, Drew from Arrowbrook? And I'd just be like, no, Chip. These are specially reserved for you. Like, I mean, I, only you could. Uh... I would only trust Chip's uh, judgment on those calls. I wouldn't ask anybody else. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, right. He's he's the authority on making out with characters in the Star Wars universe, yeah. even though Absolutely. he doesn't know like sixty percent of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, Drew and and Mike are great players. So we'll start talking about uh, spot cards and character costs to health pools and all these things. And yeah, Chip just knows how to get to the heart of it. Well, he knows exactly where each character came in the movies, too. (laughs) He knows where Bazine came from. Of course, of course. Mother Talls and and Claudite Shapeshifter are still his uh, all-time favorite characters. Oh, no. (laughs) We'll we'll get past that episode. If people are interested, they can uh, can go and peek back. I think think that was episode 40, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, But, uh, Parker, we want to... take the opportunity to get to know you a little bit before we start to dive into some convergence talk. Uh, but let's just start off. Like, how did you get into star Wars in general? So I think I've got a pretty common story. I got into star Wars as a kid. Um, you kind of grow up seeing the movies and you play with, uh, the toys, you kind of get immersed in the culture of it. Uh, and then by the time you're an adult, you realize, Oh crap. I'm a fully fledged Star Wars fan. <laughs> um, so I am actually a '90s kid. So I I watched the original trilogies on on the old VHS tapes, um, but I, I did get to see the prequels while they were in theaters. Um, I know a lot of people uh, dump on the the prequels, but they were I mean they were a part of my childhood, and they're they've got a certain st- sense of nostalgia to them. Um, I, I have recently rewatched through them and. They aren't as bad as I feel like people give them uh, give them credit for. So, but yeah, pretty pretty common upbringing watching Star Wars, watching the uh, what was it called the droids cartoon, the original Clone Wars by Gindy Tartakovsky, and then also oh, the, yeah. the Clone Wars series, uh, the one that they're finishing up this year, finishing right? Up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking it's forward. It's still not to that. like. A part of me almost, it's like a first world problem, I feel like, because they're coming back. And the fact that they're even doing that is awesome and props to them for that. But it's like they're not doing all of it. I think it's only like a handful of like maybe 14 or 16 episodes when they had planned for like 25 or something like that. So, you know, a decent amount more. So part of me sad we're not getting them all, but I'm still stoked for uh, them to round out some of the storylines. Yeah, I am looking forward to that. They have actually done a couple of, I know the Quinlan Voss book was based off of some of the unrun episodes of clone wars which was pretty interesting i hope they do some more things like that where the ones that didn't get finished get adapted into books yeah yeah that would be uh the ideal situation uh you alluded a little bit to uh some of the movies that you liked and still enjoying the prequels maybe liking them more some other people but i want to ask the question what is your favorite and what is your least favorite uh star wars movie it's tough (laughs) it is hard i can tell you my top three um Top three is actually, it's going to be controversial because Empire is not in it at all. Um, so Ooh. number one would be Return of the Jedi. I love pretty much everything about that movie from the beginning of it with all the Jabba's Palace stuff, with how creative they got with all of the practical effects. Um, that was super cool. And then when you move on to Indoor, I just love the idea of the forest planet and then you got the speeder bike chases and it's just a really, really nice movie. Um, and it kind of brings everything together at the very end there. 
Um, I mean, as it should. And you, I mean, you get to see Vader come back to the, well, come back to the light side, spoiler alert, um, <laughs> before he dies. But it, it, it's a really good one. I like, I like return of the Jedi the best. Um, second favorite would be rogue one. And then third favorite would actually be phantom menace. And I'll just leave that at that. Cause oh. I, I don't want, <laughs> I don't want any, uh, anybody showing up at my doorstep telling me that I'm wrong. So I won't even bother defending it. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a chance that could happen in the star Wars. world. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> it's, it's incredible how, um, not just like how diverse the opinions are of like, you know, what, what movies people gravitate toward, but how, how like people will die on a hill defending their opinion on, on what movie is good. And like, if you ask anybody from ABG, if, if the, if they like the last Jedi, that's like opening up a, like Pandora's box to just hear an endless, <laughs> endless barrage. Cody rants about Vader and drew rants about uh, the last Jedi. And it's just, it's, <laughs> It's awesome. I love it. Some of the, some of my favorite content they put out is when they go on <laughs> little tangents. It, I do. I do like it when they get fired up. <laughs> so how did you uh, hear a little bit about how you got into Star Wars and what you like, what you don't like? How did you get into Star Wars Destiny, the game? So I've always been familiar with trading card games. I played Pokemon in elementary school and Yu-Gi-Oh in middle school. Um, kind of fell out of the, the scene once I hit high school. Um I was socially awkward enough. I didn't need trading card games on top of that. Um, <laughs> so I, I actually got back into it. Um, we were foster parents for a couple of years. So trying to figure out things to do with teenage kids. Um, so I ended up at the card shop that is actually run by a buddy of mine that I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh with. Uh, he told me, he's like, hey, man, like, you got to get into Star Wars Destiny. Like, it's coming out soon. It's kind of like Dice Masters, but it's got characters that uh, that I know you would really like. So, I mean, we've kind of picked it up from there. And, uh, I mean, we've been with it since Awakenings, and it's it's just stuck around. It's a really fun game. Yeah, definitely. Definitely is. Uh, who's been your favorite character to come into Destiny? So it doesn't have to be like uh, it, it more like you're excited that they're in the game. So it's not more so like your favorite character because they're good specifically in Destiny. But you know, say you say you love Jabba and you're glad he's in the game. <laughs> um, I am actually. And you want to kiss him? Oh yeah, kiss <laughs> yeah. right on the mouth. <laughs> uh, no, I am. I am pretty excited that Dengar is going to be in the game. I'm real bummed that he's kind of trashed here. <laughs> Unless yeah. there's some bounty that drops that's that's bonkers, I don't I don't think he's gonna get any any play. Um, I got I got one hot take on Dengar real quick. Not maybe not a hot take, but I think that in limited or or uh, sealed draft, whatever it might may be, I think Dengar is actually gonna have s- some real game in that format. I don't think you're gonna see a lot of constructed use for Dengar though. That's fair. Yeah, I just don't think there's enough room for bounties because you already have to worry about debt consistency to begin with. And I don't know. I, I would yeah. hope that he would see some play. You're right. In limited, he might he might be good. He's got 50% damage side, so that's not terrible. Uh, yeah, and and because of the, the pack structure, you're probably going to end up with some bounties. I mean, they might not be terribly useful, but you'll have the, the space to you know put them in your deck and them not be worthless. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, and there's a common one that I think that you'll be able to grab, and you know, if you could stack three or four of those in your deck, it might be. Yeah, I mean, if you beneficial. if you can trigger one extra deck, I mean, think about how many rounds a draft game goes. If you go five rounds and you played a bounty on on round one, Dengar dealt five damage, which is pretty. It's pretty good. Yep. Yeah. So I, I I've always liked Dengar's character uh, in the extended universe, well, in the the Legends universe. <laughs> Um, I loved his interactions with Boba Fett and like the, the bounty hunter wars. Uh, and then also his little standalone comic or not comic, his standalone story in the tales of the bounty hunters. He's just a really interesting character that he gets like zero screen time, but then they really delved into him (laughs) deep, uh, in the books. Yeah, I think my only real experience with Dengar was I, I was reading like the main Star Wars comic, I guess. 
I'm really bad at following all the trails that they go on, but and I'm also very behind at this point. But like at some point, Dengar and Chewie fight, um, and Dengar just like destroys. Like, yeah, Chewie. Dude, Chewie, <laughs> Chewie gets tossed. He, oh man, that's that's rough. If you like Chewbacca, I would stay away from that comic book. <laughs> yeah, and wasn't wasn't it you that like brought up because nobody knew where the Fireblade came from or something? And it, wasn't it you that posted in the big group saying? This is where it's from. Here's Chewie like getting smacked. Yeah, I know. It was uh it was from a PSA from the world's number one Dengar fan. It was yeah. this is what his fire blade is. <laughs> everybody was so confused. And I totally yeah. get that. It's such an obscure reference. <laughs> yeah. That's cool that they include that though. In obscure stuff with some of the the more lesser known characters. Nobody's gonna really catch on that. All right, so Dengar is your favorite character. Who's your least favorite character in Destiny that you're just like, why do they even make this character? They, you know, they could have put X, Y, and Z in instead of this person. That's actually a really hard one. <laughs> <laughs> I think every time a new expansion came out and I saw like the the yellow villains getting spoiled, I was always super excited. Like, oh well, maybe this will be the set that I get Dengar. And every set, it would be like, nope, you get. Bib Fortuna. All right, <laughs> sick. Uh, so That's I think fair. I, I don't know if it's a one specific character, but I think it was the anticipation when, like, when you have the excitement over, like, hoping a character is going to be in the set, and then when all the spoils come out, you're like, oh, I guess I'll have to wait till next time. I think everybody's got like that one character that they're hoping for. Yeah, like I, I'm probably in the same boat. There's nobody I specifically hate, but it's like do we really like need a Jabba every set? You know, I understand like a Luke and a Vader and a Leia every set, but it's like, do we need a Jabba every set? And I'm not sure I would stand by that. <laughs> or And only if they do, they have to give Chip that spoiler. I think it's about my only stipulation or block, not set, but cool. And uh, lastly, before we start to get into our uh, polls, poll talk, polls, polls talk. That sounds like weird. <laughs> our poll talk um but how did you find yourself getting into making art for characters in star wars destiny so i've always been artistically inclined um even as a kid like i was always drawing the cartoons that i saw on tv and i really i really wanted to pursue that in my adult life um i kind of dabbled in some graphic design. I did some logo work, some t-shirt designs, but it had always been kind of on the back burner. Um, so once we started doing foster care and uh, once my nephews and nieces got a little bit older, um, I got really excited about drawing coloring pages for them, which is a really bizarre thing, but like, I love the kids and I, I want to give them something that is unique and gives them something to do creatively um, and giving them coloring pages that I draw seemed like a pretty good, pretty good way to do that. Um, so I, I got into drawing a couple star Wars characters and I was like, I should probably just start coloring them myself. Cause that would be fun, fun <laughs> for me. So yeah. I, I, I do, I do all of my art, artwork uh, digitally uh, with a Wacom tablet and so I started finalizing these images and realized that, I mean, if I'm going to be doing this anyway, I should get some of them printed so I can play with them myself. Uh, I had a couple of people comment on them that they, they were interested in them too. So I started pretty small. I think I did one set of six characters and kind of went from there. And I, I got a pretty good, pretty good following. I've got a couple of people who have actually been, been following the page since the very beginning and that was ooh, that's been almost a year and a half at this point um so it, it it's been it's been really fun just doing something as a hobby because obviously this is this isn't my my full-time gig this is just kind of kind of fun on the side so I, i've been enjoying actually putting my hobby to a greater use and i think the biggest thing that i've been excited about with creating these these artworks is seeing what other people in the destiny community feel about them 
Um, I think that that's one of the biggest things that's driven me to keep doing it. So I guess in a, long story short, I, I like Star Wars. I like drawing. It just felt natural to draw Star Wars character. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, that's fair. Awesome. And uh, Tommy, Tommy slid in a question here uh, before we jump to the polls. <laughs> he said, are you, or are you glad that Shane isn't on the podcast with you this episode? Um, I don't know if I should be happy or sad because I'm not really sure what <laughs> Shane would bring to the podcast. <laughs> Very little. Very little. <laughs> oh. It's okay. Just It's okay to just make fun of him. Don't worry about our, it. Our podcast is, is synonymous with tournaments now, as far as Shane's concerned. <laughs> Basically, it, he equates being on the cast to uh, going to a tournament. So he, who knows if he'll be on again. It's too competitive. Hey, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of commitment. <laughs> uh, all right, we will jump into uh, our polls that we've been doing on Facebook. If you don't follow us, um, these polls are still open, actually, and I think they all end a week after they started. And our first one started uh, on Thursday, uh, the fourteenth, I think, and then just kind of went from there each day. Um, and basically, we were trying to get talking points because obviously the. Uh, news is kind of slow at this point like most of the spoilers are already out um we did get some new ones this week uh which we can touch on a little bit but we'll kind of touch on them anyways because they're a part of one of the polls um but yeah just kind of want to get the destiny community talking a little bit and it's interesting to see what people uh think is going to be good as rotation hits and just kind of uh how people evaluate uh some of the characters so we got six for you here that we'll dive through uh and i have the results of all of them uh Except for, uh, I checked them all last night, except Phasma o- Obi-Wan, I just checked now because that was today's. So, um, all right, I guess we'll start off with today's and just kind of work our way backwards throughout the week. Uh, today was the new Phasma versus Obi-Wan Kenobi. So before I read the results to you guys, uh, cause I'm not sure if you guys even know what the results are, but, um, who would you, uh, vote for in terms of who will be more meta defining Phasma or Obi-Wan? Well, I, I did vote on all these, Jack, but I voted uh, for Phasma, although this one is kind of like splitting hairs. I think they both have a shot at being somewhat relevant. I don't think either of them are world beaters, but I don't think either of them are bad characters. I think they're both kind of middle of the road. Yeah, they both seem like they're going to be fun thematic decks. Um, I, I know that the Phasma one is definitely one that I'm going to be checking out. For the fact that it's just a really interesting mechanic to it, where you're bringing in dice that you don't actually have, um, so it seems like a, it seems like an interesting thing that'll draw a lot of people in. I doubt it's gonna be great since she's pretty squishy and she carries so much of your team. Um, that being said, I don't know how how great Obi Wan's gonna be either. Um, haven't really given much thought to him as a character in general though. So yeah, that's a uh, pretty much all stuff. I would uh, agree with. I voted for uh phasma as well. And to me, it was both the same thing. Like Tommy, you said, I, I think the, neither of them are going to be like a tier one dividing deck, but uh, they both have a chance to pop in. Um, I wasn't really at all impressed with phasma um, and still not super impressed unless she has like retribution. And I saw a, who was playing it? It was on Monk's uh, gaming battlefield. He did a stream uh, just the other day, and somebody did Phasma with uh, the Sentinel Messenger for twenty nine points, and then included Retribution. Um, but it was interesting. It, like to me, again, it didn't seem great, but uh, it was interesting. He got like a Mega Blaster down. He got two Imperial officers down, so he was like focusing all his dice and was just flooding the board with dice. And was like, oh, do I really want to remove some of these dice? Because then I'm still taking. <laughs> like a damage um so it, it was interesting uh and we had 368 votes for that one uh and 211 went to phasma and 157 went to obi-wan for a 57 43 split so it seems like i think everybody's kind of in the same boat they're, they're both seeming like they'll be good um or at least even in power level uh, i think phasma might actually be my first deck because the starters are delayed so i can't play with satine or general grievous <laughs> so depending on how my pulls go phasma might be my uh my first deck what happened to the uh han chewy deck i forgot about that why did yeah i'm interested in building phasma but if i pull han chewy that's yeah that'll, that'll be my first one 
Jeez. Thanks for keeping me in line, Tommy. Just don't let me say things. It's what I do. <laughs> All right. Any other thoughts? Yeah. Um, so rewind also, uh, shout out to monks gaming battlefield. Um, monk is a pretty awesome content creator as well. Um, Mm -hmm. always putting out the videos and everything, just a little plug. Um, he is also doing a exclusive giveaway. So, uh, you could be winning the Han and Chewbacca. You could also be winning an exclusive Palpatine from the convergence cycle. Um, if you head over to his page, uh, it should be linked over there. Um, but yeah, another shameless plug. Sorry about that. <laughs> we're all about no, shameless no, no. plugs. Yeah. I mean, we're pretty shameless. We have Shane as a yeah, member. And so Shane jokes. Like, yes. <laughs> um, is uh, Monk's giveaway live right now? It is. People? Yeah. It's, okay. it's closing next Friday. So get your, get your entries in quickly. Um, it's a, it's a super cool card. Um, I, I'm really excited with how the Palpatine ones came out. I watched so many, uh, repeats of the fight between him and, uh, Savage and Maul in the Clone Wars. And so that's where like all of the inspiration came for that one. Uh, if you haven't seen that, that fight, you should definitely look that up on YouTube. Yeah. That's, that's a must watch. Um, all right, we'll, we'll slide on to our next one, which was also a landslide, uh, or not also a landslide, but it was a landslide. Um, I didn't really knew, know who to pair Padme with in this poll, so I just kind of went with who she was spoiled with, and that's Kess Dameron. Um, who do you think, uh, who do you guys think is going to be more prevalent in the meta, uh, Padme or Kess? Definitely Kess. That's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you would agree with Shane. Shane is in love with Kess, and I believe D House too. If I'm judging by Facebook comments, Padme oh, is is actually really interesting to me. I think Padme is really cool. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think Padme is going to be a really fun character to experiment with because I feel like she goes with so many different things. I think that she's got the same appeal that Old Man Luke has, but it also spreads to all of your dice. I hadn't read that like that the first time I read it like Luke's ability, but when I realized it was all of your dice that made it very much more interesting to me. Um, but a side note about Kess, I did see, I think the Jackalman put out a video this morning uh, playing Kess Rex, which I think that deck lost the game, but it does sound like a really interesting idea of being able to just essentially do all of your dice, all of your focus, and just resolve it all quickly. It seems like a really cool action cheating ability that we haven't really seen in this new in the in the new block. So I, I think it'll be I think it'll be interesting that a, it, it's a rare character. So the fact that he's got a a solid ability in and of itself is pretty cool. But yeah, Padme is probably better. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think Kess is cool too. I mean, I, I think Shane is actually on uh, Kess Rex. That's what he wants to play and try to prove everybody yeah. wrong. But, you know, with Rex's blaster, you can saturate the pool with a ton of dice. And then you basically force your opponent to have to remove your focus sides. It seems better than what Red Hero has been getting. So For that's sure. at least Certainly. exciting. Yeah. Um, so I guess this dropped, uh, that article dropped earlier this week, if I remember. Or was it last Friday after we recorded? Um so I guess I'll read through Kess and Padme real quick in case anybody isn't sure if we are somehow your only source of info, our podcast, and you <laughs> for some reason haven't seen them yet, which I'm sure some people have. Uh, but I'll read through them real quick uh, just so people are aware of what they are. So Kess Dameron is a courageous uh, sergeant, and he's got uh, he's red hero 13, 16 with 11 health. He's a character leader trooper, and he's got a two range, three range for a buck, uh, a one focus, a double focus, a resource, a blank. And his action is resolve any number of your trooper dice in the order of your choice. Uh, and Padme is a 1114 red hero legendary with 10 health, a resolute senator. She's a character leader and she's got a one focus, two focus, three focus, one discard, one resource blank. And the text says character leader. And the text says you may resolve uh, your dice showing a focus as if they were indirect damage. So like Parker said, it can be any of your uh, focus dice. But yeah, Kess is certainly better than the, what they've, 
been getting, uh, but that's also like a super, super low bar <laughs> for what, they, what they've been getting. Um, but again, with a lot of the stuff rotating, you know, there's a chance that Red Hero could come out and, you know, I don't know if it's necessarily a good pairing, but even like Kestamer and Padme is interesting because that makes his dice a two range, three range, one indirect, two indirect. So yeah, there, there's some interesting uh, combos with that. Um, I don't know how many trooper dice are relevant aside from character dice. I don't think we've seen any upgrades on the hero side of the board for that. Um, but I like him. He's good. He's cool. But my vote was for uh, Padme as well. I think she's just got an insane ability at 14 points too. So you can bust out some three wides um, and just kind of go from there or do, do like a Yoda AR and just grab her ship first action. So it's crazy how many people voted on these two. I think we've gotten great participation from the community. Yeah, these have been uh, awesome. So uh, I guess I'll read the results for this one. It was 430 people voted and 350 voted for Padme and 78 for Kess, uh, giving us an 81-19 split in favor of Padme. Oof. So uh, Kess got blown out, received the lowest total vote of any character. Um, I understand that's situational because different votes against different characters. But man, he got... Uh, he got wrecked. 60-40 has seemed to be like 60 to 65 to like 40-35 seems to be the normal split um, aside from this one. And the next one was actually close though, which is better. Um, but any thoughts on Padme or, or Cass's individual characters or in the poll since they are new this week? I don't know if you want to give any thoughts on uh, either of them. I, Padme's, if if I'm fortunate enough to get uh, a couple of Padme polls, I'll definitely uh, be exploring that character. She's definitely at the higher end of my list for characters that I think could have some sort of potential. I think she pairs really nicely with Satine. I don't know, guys. I think I would still take Mon Mothma for those points. <laughs> Play some infinite. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you got Damn. the full uh, sheet of nine uncut. Yeah, you have to plop that down as your character card, <laughs> which Chip could, the madman. Man, could you... Could, just imagine that, or just the comparison between those characters. Ma Mothma is eleven fourteen with nine health, a one focus, two focus shield resource resource. Man, red heroes come so far. Mm-hmm. I yeah, mean, you could you could compare. There, you know, you can go backwards with any character, and it's it's like that across all colors, in my opinion. But that's that's a big big uh, that's that's a good example of of a huge jump in in power level. Yeah, yeah. The Awakenings had some pretty busted like upgrades and things and events. The characters more so have uh, kind of seen an uptick. All right. Any other thoughts before we move on to our number three poll? No, I think we got it. All right. Let's roll on. This one uh, was a battle of blue hero, 11 point characters. Um, and that is Ahsoka versus Lore San Teca. Now, of course, cost, uh, mm, 11 is such I, a good spot. Yeah, it, it really is. And of course, like, I guess I almost should have clarified like in the beginning of these polls and I tried to in the comments on them, but this isn't necessarily like who's specifically better because obviously these two characters like Ahsoka and Lorsan are going to be in two different decks. Um, so it's more so like in the meta is, is it going to be like Ahsoka's in one deck, but tier one, but Lorsan's in like two tier 1.5 decks or, you know, something like that. And you know, what makes more of an impact for you type thing. So, um, yeah, so it's it's not necessarily a direct comparison, more so of uh, who's going to have a more overall impact uh, going forward. So who do you guys feel like is going to have a be more present in the meta, Ahsoka or Lorsan? I think uh, Lorsan Tech is going to... I think he's more versatile. I think he can go in a lot, lot of uh, different builds. Obviously, he, he fits well in like a support build. He could fit into like a mill build. Um, I, th- I just think he's... He's really good. He, he offers a lot. His his ability to to add an extra card from to your hand. I mean, I know your opponent's getting to choose one of three, um, but that just it's 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 good. His dice are good. His his health total is amazing for eleven points or nine points. Um, and then Ahsoka just Ahsoka's like numbers are so good. If you have another Jedi on the table, and and the fact that she gets basically like fast hands when they activate. Um, or I guess if you knighthood her, she gets fast hands. Is that what I'm thinking, Jack? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because then when you activate her, yeah, she's a Jedi, so you can resolve it. Yeah, so so her dice would be in the pool until a Jedi activated, unless, of course, she is a Jedi. But 
but her die values are insane if you're if you're considering just like the 11 points that it costs to bring her to the table now she's got a much lower health total but I, I think that this is like one of the closest ones in my opinion that you put up but I would say Laura Santec is probably going to be seen more often than Ahsoka and that just has to go with what I think the meta is going to look like and and where Ahsoka fits I definitely agree 100% on that. I think Lor Santeca is going to pop up a lot more places because uh, he fits into a lot of different things. Ahsoka is very much so just blue hero sticks. Um, I am excited to play her with the blue Ezra and like a temple guard as like a five dice start. But other than that, I, I don't really think that she's going to see a whole lot of competitive play. I could be wrong, but I, I, I think that they're both pretty solid characters. No, I, I agree. I like that uh, five uh, wide idea as well. Um, but also somebody that interests me for that, that eight point spot would be the Vigilant Jedi because he is a Jedi as well. And he's got uh, some pretty solid sides on him. He's at the new, uh, un- not uncommon, uh, non-unique blue character, blue hero character coming out. But do you really want to be mono blue? I feel like yellow is so strong. I don't know who goes in at, in eight points for yellow, but I just feel like yellow is so strong. You really want to put yellow in there. Yeah, all right. Uh, let's do uh, drop Ezra and uh, put Satine in there. There you go. Get your girl in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I mean, blue is just uh, mono. Anything almost doesn't feel great right now. I mean, um, I like I, I like Ezra in there too. I mean, I guess if you you don't want to, is Ezra a Jedi? No, he's not. Yeah, so you kind of want a Jedi in there, so you don't have to run knighthood. Um, yeah, it's tough. I think the thing with him was. Uh, you're probably playing something on him and drawing cards yeah. and like trying to cycle to get that knighthood would be my, I, I guess, idea of what you are trying to get him to fill that role in since it's, you, you're not pairing her with Mace um, who would let you cycle your deck. Yeah. I voted for uh, Lord Santeca kind of for the same reasons you guys were stating above. Like, I think he's just really versatile, really great health uh, points. And uh, I, I mean, Ahsoka just ha- hasn't really impressed me um but that could be just something i haven't seen yet and somebody will unlock a deck uh where she shines in or even if she's a good support within that deck um so maybe it is something like a, a splashy in a different color or something like that i only tried her with mace with like lightsaber mastery and just wasn't impressed um but that was like one game with not the whole set spoiled so <laughs> means take everything. that with a <laughs> take that with a grain of grain of salt. Just kidding. Take it as gospel. That is the answer. <laughs> um, Divine. But I, I'm excited. Yeah, <laughs> I'm excited to see where Lor uh, Lor Santeca kind of falls in. Uh, just interesting to me that he just like I don't know. Like you said, he's so versatile. He can he can do a few different things and support decks. And it'll be interesting to see uh, where he falls in. Um, as for the numbers on that voting poll, we had 336 people vote. And uh, Ahsoka came in at 199, and Lor Santeca came in at 137 with a 59-41 split to Ahsoka. So that that's actually our closest. I think I actually voted for Ahsoka because, like, that's where my heart was. I was like, oh man, those are all numbers. But honestly, <laughs> Lor Santeca is just going to be showing up way more than she is. Yeah. Well, the last one when we get to General Grievous versus Watt, I voted for my heart, and you know? <laughs> I think it's potentially true, but um. All right, so that is uh, our blue hero uh, contestants. Next, we'll go to the one that's been a hot topic uh, in our group, our Golden Dice group chat on Discord, and also our, I don't know if it's been in our like Patreon Discord. Uh, I think it's just been you yelling whenever you get the chance, Tommy. But we had a I, I a just, team. I had the battle Brian <laughs> on it. I just had the battle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so basically on one end, we got Brian, uh, who loves uh, Watto coming in at nine 12 points and uh tommy is very much in love with satine coming in at uh, 10 points and they're both based basically i paired them because they're two yellow uh support role filling characters obviously they're not exact because they're two points different um so again it's not direct comparison of them but who you just think might be a better uh character within the meta and you know however you value that so how do you guys think uh satine versus wado I'll let Parker go first this time because I'm too passionate to speak. (laughs) (laughs) Um, As for these guys, I think that they'll both have their, their own specific places that they pop up. Um, 
I don't know. I feel like they're they're significantly different. Uh, Watto is obviously going to be for the the hard ramp for resources, um, where Satine is going to be a little bit slower paced. She's going to help you kind of fix your dice uh, and be a little bit more methodical. Um, I think. I mean, Watto is just so thematic. Like with his power action, I, I do love the the card design. Um, but I, I think Satine, I would probably end up playing her more often, uh, simply for her consistent dice and the fact that she gets that free reroll when she activates. Um, I did play Awakenings Jabba for a while, and that free uh, yellow dice reroll on him was always helpful. Um, so I have a feeling that she's just she's a little bit more vanilla, but she'll be. I, I feel like she'll be a little bit more prominent. Well said. Well said. <laughs> no, I feel exactly the same way that Parker does. I think that I think they're both really solid characters. I think they're both really nice support characters. But when you just come down to like crunching the numbers on them, like Watto does one thing and it's make you money. He has one random discard side. He has a two disrupt, which is very annoying for your opponent. Um, but one, you, you don't want to resolve a two disrupt when you could be resolving money for yourself. And two, in the late game, that two disrupt, when you don't need money, that two disrupt does nothing because your opponent doesn't need their money either. So it doesn't do much in the late game. The discard could help if you're milling, but it's not a reliable mill. You have no focus to alter the gigantic dice that you're playing with all this money, and you have no damage sides to help close out the game. So basically what I see is a character that's going to be left on the table when everybody else is dead that that struggles to close games. Um, where Satine kind of does jack of all trades. She's two points less. She has the same health total. She has a two damage side. She has two focus sides, and she's got two resource sides and the ability to reroll. Watto's power action is amazing, and you could just cancel that out with her create like little it's it's better than her one-off ability to reroll. But what Satine brings to the table is so much more versatile, and it's two points cheaper, and it gives you access to Hero Yellow, which is might be the strongest color uh right now in the game. I just I think that she's just gonna pop up in so many decks. Yeah. You hear that, Brian? Watto Watto's garbage, man. Um <laughs> putting words in my mouth. <laughs> No, I'm of of the same, um, and I think Watto is is very good in the decks that he'll find a home in. Um, specifically, like the three wide Snoke, I think he'll be. It's three wide Snoke, there. and and maybe as a partner for like Palpatine. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't really yeah. see a whole lot more for Watto. Yeah, and even like within that Snoke deck, like is he is he that good without Snoke? Like I would like. I think Watto makes Palp better in that build, but I almost feel like Snoke is kind of what makes Watto viable uh, in that build. Because, you know, Snoke and his resources that can't be removed uh, is highly valuable. Um, yeah. Obviously, the, I don't need the to The downside that. there is, so, like, are you going to play Snoke at one die or two? He's only two points for his dice, and his, his, his die is amazing. So, more often than not, you play him at 14, which means he dies probably late round two, early round three, because no one has force illusion anymore. So, I mean, it, it, how's Watto and a, and a first order stormtrooper or whatever your partner is going to close the game out? Uh, you better hope that you got, you know, something really good on the table and you better hope your opponent doesn't just remove it every time you roll it. Yeah, I, th I think he opens up a few uh, plays like that are potentially big. Like, I think he's probably one of the best, if not the best characters for Forsaken. Uh, having one die in the pool to remove an opponent's die with two or less, uh, which is valuable on the defensive end. Uh, and like you said, he doesn't do much for focusing your dice. But one important thing I think to note in that deck is that uh, I think you're crazy if you're not running two Imperial officers, which are uh, a support leader that you could play for two. And it's like after you activate the support, you may turn one of your trooper dice to any side. Uh, and if that deck also isn't running fist and mega blaster troopers, I would also, again, say you're crazy. So it's like that, that's got that focus there. So you can kind of guarantee your fist is hitting that free three. Uh, and on top of that, the officer has a focus and a focus side. Um, so again, it's not like world breaking. Watto has his downfalls and it's obviously other cards in the deck that are making up for it. Um, but again, I, I, I do think he'll be re prevalent because I think that deck will be prevalent and Palp will be prevalent, but. Satine, I think there's so much on potential that's not unlocked yet, like you said. Um, 
you know, we talked about like a three wide five dice deck with Padme, um, you know, and there's just other hero vehicles that might be around just 10 points is just, just crazy value. And obviously if she was villain or neutral, like people would be going crazy about her because Snoke, <laughs> like, yeah, but and she you, can't be wrong. With you Snoke. think about her with Padme and you're like, you're talking about a 10 point character with nine health and now three damage sides and two resource sides at like, what that's uh, i mean <laughs> okay and then they and padme and now your resource or your your focus sides are now just that they're focus sides and you can focus all of the other upgrades or support dice that you've put on the table to to help close the game yeah hot take on Watto. he's why crime lord's back <laughs> that's fair him and java yeah. could be uh uh people have, what what's the uh Oh gosh, Infus Nest. People have been talking about like a Crime Lord in that deck, which seems interesting. They could probably make a, a crap ton of money real quick. Because um, Watto is a scoundrel, right? I would assume he is. I, I think I he's a scoundrel Watto. scavenger. Yeah. So like the the power action with uh, what's her face would work to resolve three uh, three of your uh, scavenger or scoundrel lice. You for heard free. it here first, guys. Boom. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Wado's got the the two for one and the plus two, and then uh, Emphis Ness has that two for one. So it's like you resolve even two of those for free. You're now sitting on uh, four resources, so you could get into that real quick. All right, so we know what Parker's running when the uh, when the set drops. Oh yeah, <laughs> inside scoop, <laughs> inside scoop. Um, all right, we'll uh, roll on to our next did, one. Did you which say is- the results for that, Jack? Oh, no, I did not. So we had 517 people vote for that, and that is our highest one yet. So hot topic here. Uh, Satine came in at 182, and Wado came at 335 for a 65-35 split. Mind And again, aside from Phasma Obi, all of these could be, you know, could have some extra votes in there. Uh, but since I took these down last night, but I really doubt at this point there was much of a, much of a change. Um, so yeah, Satine... People are going to be regretting it, man. We'll make it work, Tommy. I'll I'll, I'll get no practice with one of your decks of Satine, show up to a tournament, and uh, finish second because I can't close. <laughs> you and me both, buddy. <laughs> At least you got there. Um, all right. Our next one is uh, actually including Enfys Ness, uh, and it's Enfys Ness versus Palpatine. Uh, who do you guys think is going to have more of an impact on the meta going forward? I, I picked – I just went with – I mean, I don't think either – are amazing and i don't think either are bad they're both they're both really solid i think you're going to see plenty of them but i i i have a hunch that there's more of a like a like like the blue villain fanboys will be more out than than the emphasis nest fanboys so I'm, I'm guessing you'll see palpatine just because people like sith that was literally the only thing that decided my decision to pick palpatine <laughs> <laughs> that's super fair um i know a handful of people who would side with that 100 percent. and then there's the there's me and the two other people who are really interested in infest Nest. <laughs> yeah i, I think like, Nest yeah. Is, yeah super cool character really interesting ability um not in a very popular movie i mean popular within you know hardcore fans but not like a movie that did amazing and Palpatine is, you know, one of the most iconic, probably the most successful and powerful Sith, uh, you know, we've ever seen. So that's where I'm going. And I mean, when you get to play him, you do get to use all of the good quotes like I am the Senate and unlimited power. Yep, I use those (laughs) quotes just in my daily life with my wife, which is why I have a giant lump on the back of my head from being slapped. (laughs) Well, at least you can have a a reason for it now. (laughs) <laughs> honey i was just i was thinking about decks for palpatine i'm sorry i can't his, his title's literally unlimited power okay you don't know the power of the dark side <laughs> perfect uh what was i gonna say oh i voted for infest nest that's what i voted for along the same lines uh as kind of what you guys said i don't know if nest i feel like there's a lot to explore obviously with the two villain or two hero cards in your deck um there might be ways people can potentially try to Break that with like Yoda uh, and two fists and maybe Talzin and uh, I don't know what you would want from Hero specifically. Um, I haven't really looked into it yet, but uh, just that open of neutral can kind of go into a few different things and that powerful ability of kind of bringing other stuff. But um, Palpatine, I haven't been uh, overly impressed with, but I think Tommy, your opinion is valued of, of 
um, people just playing it because it's Palpatine and yep. they're excited to play him. And, and he is a fun Palpatine. I think he's the most fun one that we've had yet. The last one was a, a pretty bum, bum of a one. Yeah, I would say this <laughs> one is at at least as as interesting as the the solo character Palpatine, which was yeah the only Palpatine that really saw any real play. Sorry, Batman yeah. Anderson. <laughs> I know he ran a uh, Palp two at PAX Unplugged, I think, in some of the pods or something, something along those lines. So uh, the results for that that was four fifty two votes we had, and uh, Palp got one seventy two, and Infest got two eighty for a sixty two thirty eight split in Infest favor. Any other thoughts on those two before we move on to our final poll? Negative. Nope. All right. Uh, our last one was a tough one for me personally, and it was General Grievous versus Watt Tambor. How did you guys vote? Or would you vote <laughs> if you didn't? <laughs> I did vote. I went Grievous. I think Grievous and Satine are two of the best characters in the set. But again, this is another uh, category that is like Watt Tambor, General Grievous, you know, identical point costs. They're both amazing. Um, I just, you know, Watt Tambor's ability is really good. Grievous just opens up different character pairings and I, I'm an idiot, but I, I think general Grievous's wheel bike is going to be good. Uh, now that we have a cheap Grievous, that's good. So I went general <laughs> Grievous, but I'm the only person that thinks that I'm definitely on the Grievous hype train. Um, I've mentioned before that I'm not super excited about most things coming out in Convergence. Um, I'm more interested in the the starter decks and allies of necessity. Um, so Grievous is, he's like the big card that I am interested in. Um, I just got into playing Afra, and it has been so much fun. Like it is, it's very, very much so my play style. Um, so having, having the ability to bring Grievous in and, have all of that synergy with droid characters and supports. I think it's going to be really, really fun. I think, I mean, anything with Afra, I think has the potential to be top tier, but on the other hand, I think Watt Tambor is also going to be freaking amazing. Um, but he's, he's above my, uh, uh my capacity. <laughs> he, he's outside <laughs> of my, uh, uh, my wheelhouse. Yeah. Uh, I voted with my heart in one in Grievous. To uh to be the one that brings Red Villain to the table. Uh, ultimately, it's interesting though. Like they are similar. They're both nine twelve, uh, as Tommy mentioned, uh, and they almost fill similar decks too. But like still kind of like taking them in different directions. Like people have talked a lot about uh, General Grievous Battle Droid Battle Droid Afra, or General Grievous Sentinel Messenger Afra. Uh, but then there's also like the Wat Tambor Afra something. I, I First order stormtrooper probably. First order, yeah. Or you could even do like I don't know if you could do it super battle droid, but you could do like the commando droid in there. Um, he's eight points, but now seven because of grievous. But uh, to me, it's just interesting the uh, like the creativity that can go within that. Um, and I think Watt probably fits well in a Snoke deck as well because uh, he has two resource sides and focus. So you know, power action, any of that seems viable, especially focus if you have a lot of powerful dice. Uh, and I do feel like Wat Tambor probably might be the more successful of the two, I guess, in terms of the power level of the deck that he's in, because that ability can be uh, super crazy. It's obviously irrelevant with the fist, but there's certain dice that you could roll in. Getting that extra die, uh, as we've seen in previous games, or previous metas, can be uh, super, super valuable. It's always a shame that they're the same point cost, so it's just like competing exactly the same. But See, and I see Grievous differently. I see him as more of a... He is a seven ten point character because he does let you have that point reduction on his on his droid fellas. So I do kind of see him as a lower cost character, but he just yeah. he makes me do so much math in my head. <laughs> it's not even funny. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. The, the nice part is that all that math gets done prior to the game, so it's not stuff that you have to worry about in game. As far as Grievous oh, is concerned, God. unless you're talking about, you know, calculating the, the re-roll. I would forget <laughs> to re-roll my dice. <laughs> if I had to do that much math. Well, I'm out of cards. I can't re-roll. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think that's that's a really great point on Grievous. Um, he certainly isn't necessarily a 9-12 because he's going to save you uh, a, a point, maybe two. 
uh, on your team if you're including some droids on it. Or uh, it'll be interesting to see the way. Or four, yeah, you could go uh, uh, just four battle droids with them, right? Mm-hmm. And just uh, just have fun. <laughs> and that's what yeah, the game's about. <laughs> about having fun, definitely. man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see because uh, there's so many combinations of him with droids as well. So it's like, what what's the uh, ideal situation? Who do we want to include? Uh, it'll be interesting to see if the commando is relevant. Uh, I think the super battle droid's a, a really good card as well. So to have him in the game uh, with that power action as well. So lots of good stuff. That concludes our polls uh, that we've done. If it's something that our people are interested in and they want to do some more in the lead up to convergence, which is uh, we're recording Wednesday night. So it's a week and a day from us recording. So if you're interested in more polls kind of leading up, uh, that could be something that we could do. I, maybe I'll throw Chewy up there, see if he can get some. Uh, yeah, I mean, we can even we could expand it to supports or upgrades or events, plots. We could we could expand this to whatever. I just don't know if it would, uh, you know, get the same participation as this did with the characters. I think there were some people that were pretty yeah. passionate, myself included. <laughs> I'm just curious to see how badly Mon Mothma beats out Padme. <laughs> That's a poll that we need. I think that needs to happen. <laughs> Throw it up right now. Yeah, get Shane to throw it up. <laughs> yeah, we'll just blame him if people hate it. <laughs> you got to use the full art version of Mon Mothma, though. That's going to get more votes. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> Next, we'll put up like the old BB-8, the gray one, versus Jedi oh, Rogues or Ray Staff or something. <laughs> this is the most um, relevant podcast you will listen to today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is going to help prepare you for Infinite. Don't worry. Um Awesome. So that is, uh, that'll conclude. Thanks to everybody that voted, uh, as Tommy said, Oh wait, general grievous Watt. the, I must skip them again. <laughs> um, so they had a total of 467 votes. Uh, general grievous had 179. Watt had 288 for a 62 38 split in favor of Watt Tambor. Um, again, thanks for everybody that voted. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm kind of like a collection data nerd like this. So I really enjoyed kind of seeing how it played out. Because uh, it'll be interesting to reflect onto these as uh, the game kind of progresses on and see how the meta shapes out and see if there's anything to actually play for if FFG announces uh, store champs or something. <laughs> but we'll just have to wait and see for that. Now, at this point, we got some uh, Patreon questions that we can dive into. Uh, some of them are relevant and real. Uh, others are not. Um, and others are, uh, we know what the answer is right away. And the first one is, will Shane ever play a game or will anyone ever play a game with Shane again? No. Uh, next and I, question. <laughs> and I, I just want to clarify that this goes beyond all games. Um, Shane stopped playing with us so he could do stream. And now he doesn't play. Now he doesn't play those games with anybody in our discord either too. Um, so no, he will not been play asking any. him to play with him for like a month and a half. <laughs> uh, it's like a kid trying to have a catch with his dad. It's not happening. It's not happening. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so that's any game ever. Will anybody play with Shane? Uh, that's probably a no, mm-hmm. unless you promise him a Kess Dameron mirror match or something. That's yeah, probably about he it. might play with D House. Yeah, he might play one with D House and call it a day. Um, next one is: Will I win a game of Destiny before 2022? No, you're only playing me between now and 2022, and it won't be at a tournament. So no, you will not win any games. Can we, can we just get one at a tournament? So I can win All right, one? we'll play one game at a tournament. Uh, on Capricorn. January 1st, 2022. And that'll be the first time you've won since between okay. now and then. That's fair. That's fair. All right. So <laughs> Inception's great questions are out of the way. Uh, on to his other one. Tommy, what's your secret deck? Uh, it involves General Grievous and his wheel bike. <laughs> and I, uh, I guess we'll sandwich this a little bit together about what your co- first Convergence deck, uh, which Jedi Geek Roll asked a little bit later at the end. Uh, I think mine, especially with the starters being delayed is going to be uh, hot and chewy. I'm still excited to see what they have left in yellow hero. Cause that's not really all spoiled. I still think Moxie's the only support or upgrade for yellow hero spoiled yet. So uh, hopefully there's something in there that gives uh, Han and chewy a little bit of a, a little bit of a boost. Um, but that'll be yeah, my first deck built. Uh, what about uh, Parker? What about you? Do you have a first deck that you're going to latch onto as soon as the set drops that you would prefer to build? Uh, probably not. Like I said earlier, I'm I'm more hyped about the starter decks and allies. Uh, once those come out, I'm definitely going to be playing um, Elite Grievous, Elite Dooku Battle Droid, just for the theme. Um, 
But I think even with Convergence dropping, I'm probably going to stick with what I'm playing right now and just tweak it a little bit. Um, so I, I've been playing a Elite Baby Annie with three Gungans and Double Down. It is Ooh, you're so savage. spicy. I so love spicy. it. <laughs> and by spicy, I mean is getting tossed in the trash every single time I play, but it's fun. Uh, it, <laughs> it is relatively mild. Yes, it uh uh-huh. yes, quite quite mild. It's as spicy <laughs> as milk. Uh, <laughs> but no, I, I've been having a lot of fun with it. I've I've been playing a lot with Gungans, uh, switching out with Boss Nass and Jar Jar and some of those other guys. Um, so now I'm I'm so much more of a casual player so i'm not really hyped on anything specifically for convergence gotcha all right yeah if, yeah again i'm probably uh the lack of starters hurts hurts my soul a little bit but we've got confirmation that they're only one week late so april 4th my, my first uh, the first deck that i'll play will actually be that box tournament so uh it'll be whatever i pull in the box <laughs> some real <laughs> some real jank yeah <laughs> yeah that'll be fun i'm sad i'm missing that i mean it's for a good reason it's not like we're we having a bad time uh, but I'll be on my bachelor weekend that weekend prior playing some paintball. Hey man, I, I, when I planned it, I was like, all right, end of March. It shouldn't interfere with convergence. It should be fine. That's, and then that was, was your like, mistake. Nope. So, uh, I'm the reason for the delay guys. Sorry. That's why they were like, that's why it's going to be the last weekend. I should have known Q2. I should have, should have known that they were going to go the last weekend of Q1, <laughs> but such is the life. So we have two, legendaries that aren't spoiled i think three i don't know i I don't know off the top of my head but we're still missing a few so is there any that you guys are hoping for uh that might be coming up yeah it's a reprint of i have inside information it's a reprint of luminara undali uh from spirit of rebellion but ticked up to legendary (laughs) perfect so card for like point cost health everything yeah yeah they actually gave her a bump up to 18 because she's you know (laughs) she needed it i have no i have no idea (laughs) (laughs) yeah I mean, it's kind of tough because it's like, what else kind of fits uh, in this mold? I think for me, I'm just hoping for like a really solid legendary uh, and yellow hero that'll. Give Honestly, them something there, to there hasn't been much for. that I'm, in, in, for, as far as legendaries go, that I've been extremely excited for. Padme might actually be one of the most exciting ones I've seen. Yeah, uh, I'm probably on that same boat. Nothing's really exciting me. There's no blue hero legendary to get excited about. Um, and then like Jabba doesn't excite me. Chewbacca, I love, but I'm realistic. <laughs> and then Palp and Phasma are like overly exciting for me, personally. I always enjoy hero characters more when I can. Parker, is there anybody for you that you're still uh, holding out hope? Uh, not necessarily. I do think Tommy's idea would be pretty good if they did a actual reprint <laughs> of Luminara <laughs> since she's on the Sorosu Mastery. Uh, that would be pretty cool. But other than that, I don't know. FFG will do what they want. Yeah, I, I thought they've done good. There haven't been any any stinkers in terms of like specific characters that I'm holding out for. Next question uh, we have is based on uh, the spoilers so far. Are there any legacies or way the Force characters that will see more play? And that is from Batman Anderson as well. I'm going to tell you right now, Batman Anderson. You you listen to me, you wonderful man. Um, it's not a character, but General Grievous's wheel bike will see play. I'm, I'm sticking to it. I know everybody's laughing. I'm laughing at myself. But I'm telling you, readying that thing for free is is amazing. I think my hot take is probably just as bad as yours, because I'm going to say Rebellion Leader right there on that Padme. Mm. Turn all those focuses to indirect. And then she dies the next round. <laughs> and then you just wasted full resources. <laughs> <laughs> um i would say that as far as characters go i would think that if blue hero ends up doing anything i do feel like luke three uh would be at the heart of that that was gonna be my answer as well luke three i think he'll start to get better as some of the more powerful blue hero stuff fell off a little bit mm-hmm. um, yeah because now I you're not he's got- restricted from like things like uh guard or whatever it may be force misdirection, force misdirection. you probably don't yeah, hit yeah. anything off of his shield sides very often um, so I think that you'll you'll be free to play him, um, and he won't really uh, limit your removal package nearly as much as he did in the past. As a matter of fact, he's going to limit your opponent's removal package now because of things like into the garbage chute. And uh, Snoke and Yoda probably still be everywhere. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, all right, we'll move on uh, to uh, our next question. And it says, if Jeremy was on our podcast, what would he, we ask him? Um, I would probably yell at him for making DJ. I still think DJ is the biggest negative play experience of the game above mill, above anything else. None of that I mind. Uh, but I do hate when people jam 25 removal cards or 28 removal cards and two witch magics um, in their talls in the DJ deck. I can't stand it. He's not very good, but he's still dumb. <laughs> so Jeremy, why? Um, I would ask him what, uh, what made him want to make so many cards that allowed uh crossover uh in deck construction between hero and villain because i feel like that's that's really ramped up um in the two most recent sets with you know kira and bush and now we have emphasis nest i'm interested in why he thinks that that's a good um design philosophy i think it makes his job a little tougher because now you have to balance cards um across the board in in a way that you haven't had to in the past yeah, I think that's a really good uh, question. Definitely makes his job harder, like you said, trying to balance everything. Parker, you got any questions for uh, for Jeremy himself? He's on the podcast right now. Uh, Jeremy, uh, as an artist, I need that sweet, sweet connection that you have with Fantasy Flight Games so I can do some licensed artwork. Um, also, <laughs> I 100% support FFG. I love you guys. I want people to buy your cards and use your dice and throw your cards away and use mine instead. (laughs) Everybody wins in that situation. Everybody wins. (laughs) Um, But I mean, in in reality, I mean, I think that the way that he's taken the game uh, and kind of breaking it up into the more thematic, um, thematic groups and adding a little bit more breakdown into the game rather than I'm just going to play these two characters that match well together because they're strong and they fit into 30 points. He's making it a little bit more rewarding for people who want to play thematic decks um, with like the subtypes and stuff like that. Um, So I, I I would applaud that and kind of uh, encourage that to keep going. I think, I think he's done a great job. I I do want to make sure that we say that every Every time we bring up FFG and anything negative about them, I do want to say that I, I think he's doing a fantastic job designing the game because I don't think he has a ton of resources to work with. And and the metas have been yeah. extremely balanced. I think even the the erratas and the balance of the force sheet and everything that comes out in the FAQs has been uh, pretty pretty much on the point. I think he's, he's done a great job. Yeah, he, he's done a really great job of like, I don't know, the game just feels fresh. It doesn't feel like characters are necessarily like pigeonholed into one deck specifically. Um, So, like, it's nice. And he's also done a good job of making some, oh gosh, what is the thematic pairings? You know, Mm -hmm. like Han Kira right off the bat, like, was a solid deck. And hopefully, Jin Cassian. There's like, yeah, Jin Cass. There's plenty of decks out there that are pretty thematic that they've done a good job making them relevant, not meta breaking, but, you know, competitive. And then also characters that just slot in a, a few different roles, like a Satine. You know, she's good. She can she can bounce around to a few different places, mm-hmm. um, and it, it just keeps the game fresh rather than just be like Satine can only work in this character pairing, and that's it. You'll never get to play her in any other situation. So, um, as for like a real question, uh, I don't really know if I have one. I'm bad at questions. Um, my again, my question was DJ Y, uh, <laughs> but I like I, I've just been super happy. Uh, you know, with where the game has been going, obviously been the, a few things that have squeaked by as we've talked about. Um, but overall with his, how much is on his plate? Uh, I don't think he has the resources to really, um, kind of catch everything. Um, I'd probably start to ask him about like his personal, uh, favorite cards that he's printed so far and kind of, you know, I'd, it's, it's probably hard for him to keep track of everything. Cause he's like three sets ahead, um, in his mind, you know, uh, being on the set 10, <laughs> we could just lock him in a room for like three hours with flocked in and then he'll come out and ask himself DJ why. <laughs> and then tells him why. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, slide on, uh, to our next question from Jedi geek Girl. Uh, if we design Sabine two, what would it look like? And I feel like this is a personal question for me because I <laughs> was a big Satine fan, uh, Sabine fan. 
right? Yeah, it's Sisipine. Mm-hmm. I had to mix them up. Sorry. Names are very similar. Because <laughs> I ran her at Worlds and stuff like that. Um, but something along the lines of, uh, I think something that would rely actually leaning into the explosive aspect or even the piloting aspect of her uh, would be a little bit more interesting. Uh, like the ambush cheating didn't necessarily feel like it was a Sabine character. Like, I feel like that could have kind of been anybody, uh, but having heard that maybe if, if she actually does um, come back, actually lean into like a thermal detonator type card or the V2 or whatever the, the new one is called uh, would be interesting for me as well. And then also like she did do like that. She had her own tie fighter and stuff like that. So like kind of seeing something like that come into play and synergy there would be uh, interesting. Well, she did like the, the pulling the upgrades from the discard pile was somewhat thematic. Cause it, I mean, she was kind of like scraping together some like weaponry, you know, and they didn't have a lot to work with in the show. I think that that was somewhat thematic, but I think that like an AOE type theme with an explosion um, would be good for her. And I think you could like diversify her damage sides a little bit. Cause she's, She's one of the few characters that I think you could represent uh, all three uh, dam- like printable damage types. You could have the indirect, the melee, and the range on there, and they would all make sense. And it might not be a yep. great thing to have printed on your dice, but I mean, if three of your dice are damage sides, it's not a bad thing either. See, and that's that's exactly where I was going. I was going to lean more into the melee side of it, uh, make her a little bit more relevant with the dark saber. maybe do like 15 points for elite, so she's not like... Got it totally mastered, uh, but something where she has a couple of melee sides. Um, I don't really know where else you would go with that. Um, thinking about rebels, it just it. I really liked that aspect of her where she was um, helping to to revive Mandalore and uh, become that symbol. Um, I, I definitely like the character development that came through. Um, in the training with Canon Jarrus, uh, which was really, really good writing, especially for a kid's show. Um, so I, I would like to see a, a melee Sabine. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, I also think we need the, the Mandalorian keyword or, you know, tribal, whatever. Because we have, like, we have, I mean, Sabine's rotated out, but we got Satine. We have the Super Commandos. Uh, yep. We have uh, uh, Bo Katan. Maybe Django comes back. Yeah, we got Boba. Yeah, maybe Django comes back. Um, yeah, so I mean, I think that's deservedly so. That could be something that could be uh, explored and focus heavily on like equipment type things since they always have those gadgets all over them and things like that. So, uh, Cool. All right, Jeremy, uh, you can send me the check uh, for that idea um, and I'll expect it in set 11 or so. Um, so thanks. <laughs> and lastly, uh, predictions for the FFG panel at Celebration. Uh, if you're looking for that time frame, that is April 11th through the 15th, my birthday weekend. Uh, I I would assume we'll probably get the, ne- the next set announcement at at the uh, the panel celebration. I feel like that's a good time. It's like a two or three weeks out from the boxes and two weeks out from uh, <laughs> the starters, or a week out from the starters, two weeks from the set. Excuse me. Yeah, that's that that is a good time to announce that. I like that. Maybe they unveil a card like they did with their uh, when they had their own uh, event up in uh, Minnesota, and like you know, uh, Timothy Zahn was there, and they unveiled the artwork for the Thrawn. Maybe they'll do something along those lines, and you know, unveil it. What would be really cool is if we found out that the next set was based on like I don't know, uh, or or like the the set after that, like we got the Mandalorian or something like that. Like they started incorporating new things like that because they've done a good job of keeping up with the the you know uh bleeding edge content you know they're 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 getting inside information for sure and and developing characters that we haven't even seen on screen yet yeah they got a lot coming up with the mandalorian you got cassian show the resistance is in full swing got a new movie coming out i want an obi-wan series on the streaming service so bad and i want benioff and weiss's uh series to i don't care if it's the same thing that they've already done give me old republic you know, Game of Thrones style, like Jedi, Sith, backstabbing, power struggle. I would love that. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, Parker, any specific uh, predictions for FFG panel celebration? I feel like just a new set announcement probably covers about anything they would <laughs> do surprising. Yeah, um, they like to just throw us curveballs every once in a while. So I, I don't <laughs> know what I was would expect <laughs> specifically. Yeah. yeah, as I 
mentioned too, like if they start to announce like the OP structure, like that would feel great at this point. You know, it's I'm excited for the new set, but uh, you know, a little nervous because I'm like, well, what am I going to play for? Uh, and not that I like can't enjoy it without a competitive scene, but I mean, I'm a competitive player, and the competition kind of fuels a fire a little bit. So if there's nothing, then I'm a little disappointed. That's right. I'm you're, sure there'll you're be mine. This set, Jack, you're mine. Uh, no, false. You got nothing to play for, son. <laughs> you're gonna dominate me. That's right. No, we all know what's gonna happen. Is Shane is gonna show up to your house once we cast and win two games and then never play again, mm-hmm. and just continue on and on about how good Kess is. And he's undefeated, but yeah, but no one will ever have to hear him except for us. Cause he doesn't talk to anybody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Fair enough. All right. We will, uh, wrap up the show. Uh, as always, uh, thanks everybody for listening, uh, for more golden dice. You can go on, on our Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch. Uh, if you want to still vote in the polls and participate in any future ones, make sure to like us on Facebook. Uh, cause that's where they are. I started to do them on Twitter, but we only got like 10 votes or whatever, 10, 15 votes. So, they didn't seem super uh, relevant and also could just be the same people voting <laughs> again on a, a different platform. So if you're interested in that, definitely head over to our Facebook as uh, we mentioned. And the reason we kind of had Parker on was for uh, the uh, advertisement of the new cards that are going to come out courteous of him. So if you're interested in that, you can head over uh, to our Patreon page uh, and sub for $5 and you'll be getting uh, a Han and a Chewy coming up in the next uh, a few weeks, that'll be the April reward for all of you guys in the five or above tier. Um, but yeah, Parker, you want to give us uh, a final plug for yourself and then you can give us our sign off. Yeah, my man. Um, so you can again, find me on facebook.com slash Parker Simpson artwork. Um, you can flip through my albums. I've got a couple ones dedicated to the star Wars destiny, but uh, like I've said before, I do some logo work. I do shirt design, um, just general illustration. I've done some kids books. Um, so, I mean, basically anything, uh, creative and 2d, uh, hit me up. I mean, I do commission work all the time. I've done a couple, uh, logos for people in the community. Uh, I did banana crap shoots. Um, I'm working with, uh, monk, uh, monks gaming battlefield right now um got a little bit in the works for that um i don't know if that's supposed to be a secret or not but uh, <laughs> uh but yeah so so find me on facebook that's mainly <laughs> where uh, i post updates um you can actually purchase my cards on top deck um i've got my own little tab on there called the parker simpson collection uh, it's got all of my available guys right there um, I am actually, I've got some big news. I'm actually, I'm going to be partnering with a, uh, brick and mortar store that also has a online shop, uh, based in Canada. Um, so for the people who are in America's hat, uh, you will soon be able to get your, uh, spicy little hands on some Star Wars Destiny cards drawn by yours truly, um, so that's, that's pretty exciting getting that moving. Um, and I guess that's, that's basically where you can find me. I, I do want to shout out to, uh, um, some of the other folks that I've, I've worked with in the, in the recent past, uh, shout out to Jedi geek girl over at, uh, I rebel, um, uh, also Sarah Evans over at I rebel and laser gaming. Uh, she's been super supportive of my artwork, um, both as a fan and, as kind of a, a partner with uh, helping me with ideas and helping me with giveaways and stuff. Um, again, Monk's Gaming Battlefield, he's been supporting me for a while. Um, the one that we're doing with him right now is actually the second exclusive that uh, that we've worked together on. Um, and I mean, there's, there's so many different people who have supported me and supported the artwork that I just, I've, I'm blown away by this community that we're all a part of. Um, and I just want to, I guess personally thank all you guys who if you've bought my cards or even just shared the posts or liked it on uh, um, on the facebook i mean i i really appreciate you guys and i i didn't think that this little side hobby would turn into anything legitimate so um yeah thank you and i i appreciate you guys having me on the podcast and 
Uh, I'm really excited to to see the full arts of Chewie and Han come come out and start seeing people getting their hands on them and getting them uh, getting them in play. All right, thanks, man. Thanks for uh, coming on. It was great having you. Uh, is there a, a final thought that you can give to sign us off? It could be a Shane insult. It could be a shout out to FFG. It could be anything you want. Hmm. Chala. Chala. Solo. Hmm. Oh, 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 oh.